Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by White House reporter Catherine Doyle. Catherine, there's been a big announcement in terms of the president. There been, was a lot of talk that he might go to Saudi Arabia and meet with the Saudis, uh, but now it's been confirmed. But this is a little bit of a break, and you've done a lot of reporting on this. This is a break from where he was on the Saudis in terms of the campaign. So talk a little bit about the implications of this. Well, on the campaign, Biden promised to make Saudi a pariah. After taking office, he released a U.S. intelligence report that held uh, the crown prince responsible for the death of a Saudi journalist. Mm -hmm. And now he's set to meet with him. I mean, up until now, he had said that he would not meet directly with the crown prince and that he would only have leader to leader contact. Mm -hmm. But over months of diplomacy, that position appears to have shifted. And now as he prepares to go to Saudi in a newly announced visit, he will meet with uh, Mohammed bin Salman, mm -hmm. as well as other Gulf leaders and the, the king of uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Now you've talked to Jamal Khashoggi's widow, the widow of the Washington Post columnist who is murdered by the Saudis, or at least that's what our intelligence has concluded, that they were responsible. What were some of her asks and her requests uh, for when Biden goes and, and does these meetings? She sent Biden a letter recently asking him to meet with her before she traveled to the re before he traveled to the region and she said that he should consider Jamal's uh, history and she should he should consider Jamal's wishes to release other Saudi political prisoners in the country. She said that she that would be one means of upholding the journalist's legacy. Mm -hmm. um, but she said importantly that she didn't want the US and Saudi relationship. Uh, relations to to uh, to get any worse, and that she thought that it was a good move by the president to be to be pursuing closer ties with the kingdom. Now, obviously, during the campaign, there was a lot of talk about the Saudis and human rights, and obviously, you mentioned the making the Saudi regime a pariah. Uh, but something pretty big has changed, and fairly obvious has changed, and that's energy prices now that the, the president is in office. But Biden has said he's not going over there to beg for oil. Biden has said that this is about security concerns, uh, it's about climate initiatives, it's about infrastructure projects, and that it's not about oil. Mm -hmm. um, the Saudi government recently committed to a small increase in production, but they're a major oil supplier, and so there is hope that at least going into 2023, they might be able to boost production. It's unlikely that Biden will get anything significant uh, in that range um, in the short term, but I think the long-term hope is that will happen despite what the administration is saying. So do we think this would have happened if we didn't have the Russian invasion of Ukraine? It's unlikely. Uh, the gas prices have really surged in the wake of uh, the sanctions that the U.S. has imposed and rallied other countries behind. Um, and Saudi Arabia is a close partner of Russia, and the U.S. has pressed them to come over closer to the U.S.'s position and hasn't had much success. So finally, there's been a lot of controversy over President Biden's COVID testing regime. They say that he has a regular cadence. He's tested weekly. Uh, but number one, the White House has been a little cagey about when the exact dates of the testing it was, at least most recently as we're filming this. Uh, but also there's just been a number of cases where he would have seemed to be with a close contact of other people who've tested positive for COVID, but he's never deemed to be one under the CDC guidelines. Biden has never been, I don't think, a close contact of, of any of his aides who've tested positive. And last week, despite spending nearly an hour in a bilateral meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, mm -hmm. he was still deemed not a close contact. Just the day before, he was hugging Trudeau and he went mm -hmm. to a dinner with him that evening. Um, so it's unclear exactly uh, why that is, but th that's the White House's position and they seem to be sticking to it strictly and also declining to say when it was that Biden last tested. Mm -hmm. So we learned under Donald Trump that the presidency itself doesn't cure COVID, but it, it seems to be that under this administration, it's an impenetrable force field. That's exactly right, <laughs> at, least for, at least for this president and at this time. Thank you, Catherine. You can read Catherine and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.